ಅಕ್ರತುಂಟಮಹಾಕಾಯ ಸೂರ್ಯಕೋಟಿ ಸಮಪ್ರಭ ನಿರ್ವಿಘ್ನ ಕುರು ಮೇ ದೇವ ಸರ್ವಕಾರ್ಯು ಸರ್ವದ ನಾರಾಯಣಂ ನಮಸ್ಕೃತ್ಯ ನರಂಚೈವ ನರೋತ್ತಮ ದೇವೀಂ ಸರಸ್ವತೀಂ ವ್ಯಾಸ ತಥೋ ಜಯ ಮುದೀರೇತ್ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಎವ್ರಿ ಒನ್ ಇನ್ ಟುಡೇ ಸೆಷನ್ ವೋಲ್ ರೆವ್ಯೂ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ನೈನ್ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ನೈನ್ ಇಸ್ ಡಿಸೈಟೆಡ್ ಆಸ್ ಫಾಲೋಸ್ ವೇದ ಸ್ವಾಂಗೋಜಿತ ಕೃಷ್ಣೋ ದೃಢ ಸಂಕರ್ಷಣೋ ಚ್ಯುತ ವರುಣೋ ವಾರುಣೋ ವೃಕ್ಷ ಪುಷ್ಕರಾಕ್ಷೋ ಮಹಾಮನ ಇನ್ ದ ನಾಮ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ಯಾಟ್ ದರ್ ಆರ್ ಟ್ವೆಲ್ ನಾಮಸ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ವೇದ ಸ್ವಾಂಗ ಅಜಿತ ಈವನ್ ದ ವಿಸೆ ವೇದ ಸ್ವಾಂಗೋಜಿತ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಅಜಿತ ಸ್ವಾಂಗೋಜಿತ ಅಜಿತ ಅಜಿತ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಜಿತ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಅಜಿತ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ದೃಢ ಸಂಕರ್ಷಣ ಅಚ್ಯುತ ಸಂಕರ್ಷಣೋಚ್ಯುತ ದಟ್ಸ್ ಹೌ ವಿ ಸೇ ಸಂಕರ್ಷಣ ಅಂಡ್ ಅಚ್ಯುತ ವರುಣ ವಾರುಣ ವರುಣೋ ವಾರುಣೋ ವೃಕ್ಷ ಪುಷ್ಕರಾಕ್ಷೋ ಮಹಾಮನ ಇನ್ ದ ನಾಮಾವಳಿ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ಯಾಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಸೇ ವೇದ ಓಂ ವೇದ ಸೇ ನಮಃ ಸ್ವಾಂಗ ಓಂ ಸ್ವಾಂಗಾಯ ನಮಃ ಅಜಿತ ಓಂ ಅಜಿತಾಯ ನಮಃ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಓಂ ಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ನಮಃ ದೃಢ ಓಂ ದೃಢಾಯ ನಮಃ ಸಂಕರ್ಷಣ ಓಂ ಸಂಕರ್ಷಣಾಯ ನಮಃ ಅಚ್ಯುತ ಓಂ ಅಚ್ಯುತಾಯ ನಮಃ ವರುಣ ಓಂ ವರುಣಾಯ ನಮಃ ವಾರುಣ ಓಂ ವಾರುಣಾಯ ನಮಃ ವೃಕ್ಷ ಓಂ ವೃಕ್ಷಾಯ ನಮಃ ಪುಷ್ಕರಾಕ್ಷ ಓಂ ಪುಷ್ಕರಾಕ್ಷಾಯ ನಮಃ ಮಹಾಮನ ಓಂ ಮಹಾಮನ ಸೇ ನಮಃ ಸೊ ಲೆಟ್ಸ್ ರೆವ್ಯೂ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ನಾಮ ಜಸ್ ವೇದ 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 ರೆಫರ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಜನರಲಿ ಟು ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಕಸ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಇಸ್ ದ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟರ್ ಯೂಸಿಂಗ್ ದ ವೇದಾಸ್ ಬಟ್ ಪರಮಾತ್ಮ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟೆಡ್ ಈವನ್ ದ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಹೆನ್ಸ್ ಪರಮಾತ್ಮ ಇಸ್ ದ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟರ್ ಆಫ್ ಎವ್ರಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಸೊ ಹಿ ಇಸ್ ವರ್ಷಿಪ್ ಡಸ್ ವೇದ ವಿಧಾತ ಸೃಜತಿ ಇತಿ ವಿಧಾರ ವೇದ ಸೊ ಈ ಒಂದು ಪರಮಾತ್ಮ ಇಸ್ ದ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟರ್ ಹೀ ಗಿವ್ಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ನೆಸ್ ಟು ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಅಂಡ್ ವಾಚ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಶೈನ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ಟೈಟಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ ದ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟರ್ ಹೆನ್ಸ್ ಪರಮಾತ್ಮ ಇಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ ವೇದ he as the creator creates very many things rivers mountains devas senas gurus maharishis so many so many and so many more the provider has created various auspicious things for the benefit of everybody in the lokam vidata da vidata da titi vedaha vidada titi vedaha he has himself created everything and he has also detailed the beauty of very many of his creation in extensive detail for example in bhagavad gita chapter 10 krishna paramatma goes on to tell that he is the greatest in each of the specialized things he has created some examples vedanam samavedu among all the vedas krishna says that he is samaveda ರುದ್ರಾಂ ಸಂಕ ಶಂಕರಶ್ಚ ಅಮಾಂಗ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ರುದ್ರಾಸ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸೇಸ್ ದಟ್ ಹಿ ಇಸ್ ಶಂಕರ ಮೇರು ಶಿಖರ ಶಿಖರಿ ನಾಮ ಅಹಂ ಅಮಾಂಗ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಶಿಖರಂಸ್ ಅಮಾಂಗ್ ದ ಆಲ್ ದ ಪೀಕ್ಸ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಮೌಂಟನ್ಸ್ ಹಿ ಸೇಸ್ ಐ ಎಂ ಮೇರು ಸೇನ ಸೇನಾ ನಾಮ ಅಹಂ ಸ್ಕಂದ ಅಮಾಂಗ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಆರ್ ಬಿ ಚೀಫ್ಸ್ ಐ ಎಂ ಸ್ಕಂದ ಸರಸಾಮಸ್ಮಿ ಸಾಗರ ಅಮಾಂಗ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ವಾಟರ್ಸ್ ಐ ಎಂ ದ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ವಾಟರ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಸಾಗರ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಓಷನ್ ಸೊ ಹಿ ಇಸ್ ದ ಒನ್ ಹಿ ಇಸ್ ದ ಮಂಗಳಕಾರಿ ಹಿ ಇಸ್ ದ ಒನ್ ಹೂ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟೆಡ್ ವೇರಿಯಸ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಬೆನಿಫಿಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಒನ್ ಬಟ್ ವೆನ್ ಎವರ್ ವಿ ವೆನ್ ಎವರ್ ವಿ ಜನರಲಿ ಸೇ ದ ಟರ್ಮ್ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟರ್ 
who do we immediately associated with brahma but paramatma he gives his greatness to brahma and watch brahma shine with the title of being creator that is why paramatma is called vedaha the lesson that paramatma is teaching us is that in general the common tendency is to take credit for the work we do but we should learn from this nama that seeing others shine gives more happiness than taking the credit for our own selves that's the implied um uh, lesson from the nama vedaha the next nama is swanga so for doing all this creation he is able to do everything by himself without needing anyone's help swanga swayameva karyasya karane angam sah karoti iti swanga anga so there are two components in this swa anga swanga anga means limbs one who needs limbs to do all the creation swanga his limbs are so special that he can do everything by himself swayameva karyam he does everything by himself for example if we have to make a pot what all do we need we need clay we need a person to make it we need a wheel to spin but for him swayameva karyam he does everything by himself so he is the pot he is the clay he is the person that is making it he is the wheel so he does everything he has very special limbs that he can do everything by himself swangaha not just any angam but swangaha so that means if he is doing everything by himself he is the material cause as well as the instrumental cause of any deed in the universe hence the one with the special limb special anga is swanga imagine a country that can feel so secured that its leader can take care of their country without any assistance from anyone swayameva karyam if a country can do everything by itself without needing any help from anybody imagine how secured that country would be the implication of this nama is that when we worship shri mahavishnu there is no need for any other help from anyone else externally that is the meaning of swanga that is how he runs his administration that is how he leads that is how his kingdom is so he makes everything with his own anga yet he gives the credit to everyone even uh, we say you know in our uh, everyday lives we say oh i created this i created that but in reality all that is created the instrumental cause and the material cause is all shri mahavishnu swanga he is the only one that can do that that is how but he will create everything and he will give the credit to us he will create everything and he'll give the credit to brahma he will create everything and he'll give the credit to all of the people in his kingdom that is how he rules his kingdom hence he has features or limbs that depicts a supreme sovereign the way he administers it's not just like any other king who administers or any other leader the way he administers shows supreme sovereign swanga very very special limbs that he can be everything he can be the material cause and the instrumental cause so this nama goes on to describe that he being the king of all the universe has the identification to describe that he is the chakravarti of the prabancham the entire universe itself of the brahmandam what are the celestial marks of sovereignty chatram chatram means the umbrella chamaram somebody very close always doing the chamaram the king has a very special crown makutam and he sits on this divine throne completely surrounded by auspicious art um, you know uh, associates who always know the greatness and sing his praise that is why in the temple worship 
we see the shoda shobha chara they'll have um you know an umbrella like um uh, a, a small umbrella they'll have something that depicts the chamaram chatram chamaram they do um while doing the rituals prayers in the temple they do the shoda shobha chara uh, that is to signify that he is not just any king but he is the king of all the prabancham that he has, that those are the identifications of the supreme sovereign that governs the entire universe doing everything all by himself uh, by, by being the chakravarti of the prabancham uh, not just as angam just 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 by him sitting in that throne imagine rama sitting in the in the throne and just having the feel that rama is going to rule the world swanga angam every angam of him just just to see rama being there you know you feel so protected under rama's rule so we are going to be under the divine protection of shri rama that seated posture brings enormous comfort and prosperity just like the type of body that he has the type of the structure and the seating posture itself gives so much comfort when he sits on the throne everyone feels a great sigh of relief ah rama rajyam that that is how is anga anga is not just any angam but swangam sometimes in our um, uh, in 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 when there are different um, you know parties that rule in a country when some parties come to power just by knowing that a certain party is going to come to power to rule the country itself gives enormous comfort because they have that property of governing that protects everybody so swanga is the property of paramatma who has the identification of supreme sovereign where he does everything but he gives the credit to everybody else so veda swanga the third nama is ajita jitam jit jit jitam means to win ajita means one who cannot be one na jita means he cannot be won by anybody else he is the one that always holds victory in all of his various avataras he is undefeated we see that paramatma takes various various avataras and you know he came as narasimha to rescue prahlada um, from hiranyakashipu who won narasimha won in varaha avatara who won paramatma won he rescued bhumi so in various avataras and in all the avataras and in all the time he is the one who always wins nobody can win him over so he is ajita that's one meaning second very special meaning is shri vaikuntham is called ajita ajita means it is the city that cannot be won he is the leader of the city he is the leader of the city where nobody else can win over him he is the leader of the city of ajita hence he is ajita see ajita is we usually say ajita as the name right a proper noun but here ajita conveys the guna of paramatma that nobody else can win over him shri vaikuntham is called ajita nobody can win over shri vaikuntham because it is suddha satvamayam satyam and dharmam are always unconquerable hence shri vaikuntham is called ajita and the chief of the unconquerable place of ajita or shri vaikuntham is ajita puram hiranmayim brahma vivesha aparajita shri vaikuntham is also called aparajita or ayodhya ayodhya yod yuddh yuddh na yuddh no yuddham ayodhya means no yuddham no one can win over him ajita ayodhya is hence uh, shri vaikuntham is otherwise called as ayodhya ayodhya is ajita ayodhya is the bhuloka vaikuntham shri vaikuntham is is 
is something that we have to experience, but that which we can see with our eyes and experience in Bhulokam. Bhuloka Vaikuntam is Ayodhya. Ayodhya is Na Yuddham. That means no one can win over him. Ajitha. That's the second interpretation. The third interpretation very beautifully says, the question of being conquered only comes when there is another person of equal might. Since there is no one equal to the Paramatma in any respect, he is unconquered, hence he is Ajitha. So that's a very beautiful name. The leader of Sri Vaikuntam, the unconquerable place of Ajitha is Ajitha. Then comes a very beautiful Nama called Krishna. Veda Swango Jita Krishna. Krishna. Though the Nama is Krishna, it does not explicitly refer to Krishna Avatara Namas. Those are coming later. In this sloka, the Nama Krishna is to be understood just as a Samanya Vachakam. A common reference. For example, we say Govinda. Govinda is also Krishna's name. Govinda is also Paramatma's name. But as a Samanya Vachakam, if we try to understand what Govinda means, we'll say Go means cow. Vinda means rescuer, a rescuer of cow. We use it as a Samanya Vachakam than as a Krishna Vatara name. Similarly here, Krishna, the Nama Krishna is here to convey the Guna of Paramatma and not necessarily mean the Krishna Avatara Namas. That's a distinction. Krishna. Krishna here means one who is dark hued, black color, one who has the complexion of the dark hued black color like that of a rain cloud. It is indicative of infinite mercy. Rain flows for everyone. It doesn't discriminate that it will pour only for rich, rich people or it will pour only for poor people. Rain pours for everyone. Impartially pours. Impartially pours its abundance on all. That is what Krishna means. The dark-hued one who has the black color like that of a rain cloud. That is what is implied as Paramatma's guna of pouring infinite mercy like that of a rain cloud. That is the meaning here of Krishna. For example, when, um, when Paramatma started to speak, he gave Bhagavad Gita. It's like pouring his grace. Whenever he started to say something, we have the invaluable Gita for us. Like when he talks, he just it just pours out of mercy, infinite mercy. The wealth of knowledge, that, that, that is the guna, the abundance. That is the guna that is explained here as Krishna. One who is dark hued, black color like that of the rain cloud. Krishar Varne, the black color that we can see, that is also referred here. Krishar Varne, Varnam. Varnam means color. What kind of Varnam? Krishar Varnam. And what is the color of Krishna? Black color. For example, when we see grapes, that's an example of Krishar Varnam. And one more fun fact um, that explains the importance of pronunciation here. While Krishna refers to the Lord, if we elongate the sound and say, Krishna, then... It refers to Draupati, who is also black in color. So, Krishna versus Krishna. If we elongate that, that's why when we, whenever we recite something, our elders say that we have to re recite it with proper pronunciation. Of course, if we make mistakes, Paramatma will always forgive us. That's a different uh, uh, thing. But it is uh, a fun fact to understand that. Every pronunciation has different, different meanings depending on where we elongate the Shabdam. So, Krishna, Krishna. So, coming back to Krishar Varnam, black color like that of the abundant rain cloud. 
let's understand that krishur varnam a little bit more with the help of shrimad ramayanam we know that shrimad ramayanam has been written in various languages by various great sages and poets one such magnificent work is the ramayanam written by the great poet kavi chakravarti kambar in the language tamil kambar wrote a very beautiful work of ramayanam and that is called kambar ramayanam he is called kavi chakravarti chakravarti the the king of all the poets chakravarti kavi means poet chakravarti means king of all poets kambar has a very specialized way of explaining uh, ramayana uh, in his own very special way so kambar ramayana a few lines from kambar ramayana that references this dark rain cloud like krishna to describe koshala koshala kingdom's prosperity let's um, recite this line from kambar ramayana ஈர நீர் படிந்து இந்நிலத்திலே சில கார்கள் என்ன வரும் கருமேதிகள் ஊரில் நின்ற கன்று உள்ளிட மென்முலை தாரை கொள்ள தழைப்பன சாலியே திஸ் இஸ் பாராகிராஃப் ஃப்ரம் கம்ப ராமாயணம் அண்ட் ஐல் எக்ஸ்பிளைன் வாட் இட் மீன்ஸ் கம்பர் சேஸ் இந்த கிரேட் கிங்டம் ஆஃப் கோஷலா கவுஸ் ஆர் வாண்டரிங் எவ்ரி வேர் இந்த இந்த கிரெயின் ஃபீல்ட்ஸ் like huge black moving rain clouds see all the cows are moving it is as if that krishar varnam black color it's moving like rain clouds in the fields in the grain fields at that time the cow thinks of its calf the soft udder of the cow pours milk everywhere in the field because of the affection towards the calf as soon as the black colored cow thinks of its calf its udder pours milk everywhere in the field the black cloud like cows are pouring milk instead of rain hence the grains in the field were grown with cow's milk instead of just water in koshala's kingdom this is what kambar's ramayana kambar is describing the prosperity in general how will the fields be taken care of we pour water and hence the grain grows but here kambar says the cows are wandering everywhere thinking about the calf it pours pours milk and the grains are grown with milk directly so in general when we make kheer for payasam what do we do we only add milk to the rice and that's how we cook whereas in koshala kingdom milk is directly added by the cows to the grains in the field it seems that's how the bounty and prosperity of the krishar varnam is says kambar for krishna so krishar varnam does not mean just the black color that we can see with our eyes like that of the grapes color but aprakrita varnam prakriti means that we can see aprakrita means that we it's not seen generally by prakriti the as a color but which is felt the aprakrita varnam of prosperity so hence krishna means the guna of rain clouds which is to pour prosperity in us abundance that that is the guna of parmatma depicted as krishna so veda swango ajitaha krishna the next nama is drida dridam dridam means firm dridam one who is firm in his nature he is very dridam that means he is firm in his nature he is firm in his words he is firm in his capacity he has various roles but he is firm in whatever he do as a son rama proves that he is the best as a husband as a king as a firm ruler firm dridam in everything dridam in decision making firm in everything that he has created an example firm dridam think of an ocean have you ever wondered if you if you go couple of miles from the shore 
you find the ocean so deep with heavy waves. But when you see the shore lines, it is as if someone drew a line here and said, your boundary is just this. That's it. Stay firm here. Dridam. Drida. You just need to stand here. You cannot come after this line. It is as if Paramatma created his creation. Dridam. With firmness, he said to the ocean, you, you can be so much deep. You can be unfathomable. But when it comes to the shore, this is your boundary. This is it. Dridam. Just stay here. After that, you just come here and the waves go back. It's as if like that. The, everything that he has created is dridam. He firmly says, this is your line. line. That's an example of dridam. Dridam in words and actions. Sri Rama firmly established that he will be Ekapatni Vratha. In his role as a husband, he firmly establishes that he is Ekapatni Vratha. He expresses both in words and in actions that the value of chastity, it is not just for women, but also for a man. Dridam, firmly establishing. Another example of Dridam, as a Vyuha Rupam. Until now, we worship Parabrahma. In the previous shloka, what did we say? We say Gupta. We said Guhya. All meaning that he is hidden in secret by Acharyas. But so we worshipped him as Parabrahmam. Parabrahmam is, you know, when we say Parabrahmam, as a normal human being, it is very it's a reach, it's a challenge to relate to Parabrahmam because we have not visualized how Parabrahmam is going to be. That is something that needs to be come only by yogam, that which is by meditation. That is the only way we could understand the Parabrahmam. That's why we said he is hidden. But now this Nama says we can see his Vyuharupam. We can firmly see his Vyuharupam. Firmly, dridam. We can dridam. We can firmly see his view, view harupam. Visishta Advaita specifies four view harupams, four, four view harupa, four view her forms to do certain specific functions. Paravasudeva, Pratyumna, Aniruddha, and Sankarshana. Those are the four view her forms. We are able to see his form firmly in view harupam, dridam. How, how can we firmly see him, Dridam? How can we see his Vyuharupam? The next Nama explains that as Sankarshana. Veda Swango Ajitaha Krishna Drida Sankarshana. Dridam, his Vyuha form of Sankarshana. Samam Karshanam Nayati. Samam means equal. Karshanat means he who draws everyone equally. So, one who draws everyone equally is Samam Karshanam Sam Karshana. Who, who is everyone? Achit and Chit. Achit means one who do not have knowledge, like a rock. And Chit means one who has Chaitanyam, like humans, birds, animals. All of us who are, who are termed as chit, one who draws everyone equally, the chit and achit, samam karshanat is samkarshana. So samkarshana refers to the vyuha form where he draws all the beings to him during pralaya. So parabrahmam is a form that nobody is able to visualize. So he takes a dridam form, a form that is dridam as sankarshana. How can he create and then take everything back to him? So first earlier part of the Nama said Veda and Swanga, he said, we said he creates everything. And then later in the sloka, the Nama says sankarshana, which takes back, which draws everybody back during pralaya. How can he create and then take everything back to him? We have not experienced that kind of a pralaya referred to in this shloka. So, we don't know how to relate to that. But, 
there is one firm example of creating and taking back that we can see dridam a drida rupa of sankarsana you see how the namas are connected now we are able to see a dridam form of sankarsana a firm rupam of sankarsana in some form where we have seen him create take back create take back again and again and again and again where is that where can we where can we see this property or guna of sankarsana in our everyday lives during sunrise and sunset during sunrise the sun rays are created the rashmi that is created he creates it he creates the light during sun sunrise where does he take back at sunset property of sankarsana create take back create take back every day morning create the rays so it's lighted everywhere every day evening sunset take the rays back see the property of sankarsana that you can firmly see dridam from sankarsana samam karsanat nayati to draw everybody equally the property of creating take back creating take back he who attracts everybody during pralaya that property of sankarsana is firmly visible in certain parts so that is that is this nama sankarsana the next nama is achutha chutam means to slip achutha means never slips this nama achutha came in the earlier shlokams also but the meaning of achutha there is that paramatma does not let his devotees slip from his divine hands hence he was called achutha whereas here even though it is the same nama achutha the meaning is different the meaning here based on the context of discussing esahatrik namas is that he never slips from his vyuha form other gods like indra brahma varuna there are so many other gods but they only have limited time in their pose they fall down from their position when it is done but paramatma never slips from his position so he is achutha for example indra if anybody does uh, more than a certain number of ashwamedha yaga the current indra has to step down and the post of indra goes to the next person so the post of indra is not permanent it slips chutam brahma brahma deva only acts in the capacity of brahma for a specific number of kalpas after that what happens a pralayam comes and a new brahma occupies that post so the post of brahma is not permanent it is chutam but paramatma's position is not chutam it's always a chutam it never slips he always exists in his position in shri vaikuntham his position never slips hence he is a chuta his position firmly exists so you see dridam sankarshana achutaha dridam and achutaha he firmly has established his place in shri vaikuntham dridam so very beautifully this nama achuta says he who never slips from his form he is always there in his form in shri vaikuntham achuta the next two namas varuna 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 has two meanings one to refer commonly varuna bhagavan that we know lord of waters varuna the other meaning is varuna refers to shri maha vishnu's gigantic rupam there are so there are two different meanings and two different approaches varuna varuna let's review both the approaches varuna sun is called varuna especially the setting sun swa rashmi nam 
சம்வர்ணாத் சாயம் காயாத் சூரியோ வருணா ஸ்வரஷ்மி ரஷ்மி மீன்ஸ் ரேஸ் த ரேஸ் ஆஃப் த சன் வென் ரேஸ் ஆஃப் த சன் வென் சாயம் காயாத் சூரியோ வருணா சாயம் காயாத் சாயம் காயாத் சாயம் காலம் மீன்ஸ் ஈவினிங் ஈவினிங் சன் செட்டிங் சன் ஆதித்ய மண்டலவர்த்தி ஸ்ரீ மகாவிஷ்ணு சாயங்காயாத் சூரியா த ஈவினிங் செட்டிங் சன் இஸ் கால்ட் வருணா தட் இஸ் வை வி ஆஃபர் ஈவினிங் ப்ரேயர்ஸ் டு த சன் த ஈவினிங் செட்டிங் சன் சாயங்காயாத் சூரியா இஸ் கால்ட் வருணா வருணசிய அபத்தியம் வசிஷ்டோ அகஸ்தியோ வ Varunasya Apatyam, the sons of Varuna, Sage Vasishta and Sage Agastya are called Varuna. Sons of Vasishta, var, sons of um, Varuna, Varuna. Who are the sons of Varuna? Sage Vasishta and Sage Agastya. If Varuna refers to Sri Mahavishnu, the Amsam of Sri Mahavishnu are Varuna. the revered sages sage vasishta and sage agastya sage vasishta if you recollect he explains yoga vasishtam to sri rama himself he is the kula guru of ikshvaku sage agastya he da supadesam of aditya hridayam to sri rama himself to get victory over ravana such great sages who are amsam of uh, sri mahavishnu sons of varuna are called varuna say jagastya can keep the vindhya mountain bend down his head the great mountain will always keep his head bent up based on the words of say jagastya say jagastya can drink the entire ocean their maha shakti is indescribable so varuna refers to the sons of varuna say vasishta and agastya the greatest of the sages varuno varuna varuna refers to the sun especially the sayangayat surya the evening sun is varuna if you that is varuna as sun varuna as shri mahavishnu if you think of varuna as lord varuna bhagavan then the sons of varuna are varuna sage vasishta and sage agastya ஸ்வரஷ்மீனாம் சம்வர்ணாத் சாயம் காயாத் சூரிய வருணா த அதர் நெக்ஸ்ட் இன்டர்பிரிட்டேஷன் இஸ் தட் சேம் நாமா வருணா பட் த நெக்ஸ்ட் இன்டர்பிரிட்டேஷன் டேக்ஸ் த சம்வர்ணாத் ப்ராப்பர்டி சம்வர்ணாத் மீன்ஸ் டு கவர் டு என்காம்பஸ் ஃப்ரம் ஹெவன் டு அர்த் ஒன் த குணா ஆஃப் என்காம்பசிங் ஃப்ரம் ஹெவன் டு அர்த் imagine that securely holding to cover to encompass to envelop from sky to earth this huge stoola roopam with his anga the special arm swanga with his very special angam with his spe- very special angam you recollect the name swanga anga with not just a, a, any other arm with his very special arm swanga he surrounds all the lokam vishva roopam gigantic roopam so varuna means one who can cover one who can envelop from sky to earth that's the second meaning of varuna why because varuna bhagavan is only one part of the panchabhutas whereas paramatma has even all the panchabhutas within him so he this nama is more than just describing varuna bhagavan just because we see the, the nama as varuna we cannot just take it that it implies varuna bhagavan here in the context of the shloka it not just implies varuna bhagavan but it encompass it it describes the property the guna of bhagavan who does samvarnat which means to cover to envelop say we have a home and if we put a compound around it 
our home how will it be we feel we are inside our home we feel secured we have we 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 are secured under that shelter right under that envelope under that cover of that compound we are surrounded by that compound we are safely inside imagine like that imagine that we are inside his arms and that we are covered by his shariram hence such a huge stula roopam this is why vishnu sastranama very beautifully say bhupadav yasya nabar viyadasura nila chandra suryo cha netre karnavasa sirodyor mukam api dahano yasya vasteya mapti this huge stula roopam is described in vishnu sastranama as bhupadav he has this big form that envelops everything that bhumi is just his padam bhupadav yasya nabar sky is just his navel chandra suryo cha netre chandra and surya are are his eyes karna vasa all the directions are his ears mukam api dahano fire is in his mouth that that is his form samvarnat to envelop from sky to earth that guna of paramatma is called varuna varuna if that is the meaning of varuna what is varuna then varuna means just because he has this huge stool or roopam it does not mean he is somewhere he is right here very close to us in the hearts and minds of his devotees who long for a spiritual union that is the property of varuna like that of a rain cloud varuna elaborates that just like a rain cloud showers rain impartially on all without looking at who is rich and who is poor lord also impartially pours his grace on everybody but depending on where the rain drop falls the property of the receiving object reflects him differently this this is very important rain is the same but depending on where the rain drop falls the property of the receiving object he is reflected in them differently for example if the rain falls on the fields the rain drop is reflected as fertile grains we get really good crop if the same rain drop falls on a place with dirt the rain drop becomes muddy water if the same rain drop falls on an oyster it becomes a precious pearl the rain drop is the same but depending on where it falls it either the receiving object converts it as a muddy water or it converts it as a precious pearl so varuna is this guna of pouring as rain cloud impartially to all he is the same it all depends on our mind's fitness to receive his grace says this nama but he is right there don't worry that he is this big huge stool roopam of varuna he is varuna he is very close to you it it depends on how well we can receive him uh, the fitness of our mind to receive him so varuna varuna so varuna varuna earlier meant the varuna means the setting sun varuna means the sons of varuna say vasishta and agastya that's one meaning the second meaning is varuna means one who is enveloping sky to earth but even though he is so huge yet he is very close to us and it is our mind's fitness that that need to you know have the blessing of receiving his grace and making his grace as a precious pearl so varuna varuna the next nama is a very very beautiful one it's called vriksha if you recollect the shloka veda swango jita krishno drita sankarshano sankarshano achutah varuno varuna vriksha vriksham vriksham means tree paramatma's name one of the thousand names itself this vriksham it means tree he provides shade like a tree hence he is called vriksha every time we see a tree hereafter we should recollect this nama from vishnu sahasrama 
every tree is Vriksham. Vriksham is one of the 1000 names in Vishnu Sastranama. See, Vishnu Sastranama is very, very close to us than what we think of. Every day object that we see of, every day we say trees. Tree is Vriksham. Vriksham. What, does, what are the properties of a tree? A tree provides shelter to everyone. It provides shelter for millions of birds to build nests. Provides shelter for everybody. Anybody can go and stand under a tree. It will provide shelter. That's a property of a tree. Paramatma is also like that. Every aspect of the Vriksham helps. Paramatma is also like that. If you see the roots of certain trees, we can eat. The bark of the trees is used to make clothes. Leaves of trees, we eat spinach. Leaves of the trees is used to make plates. Leaves are useful. Every aspect of it is used. Fruits, trees, vriksham. Trees gives fruits. We eat the fruits. Every, every aspect of the tree is very useful. Like that, every aspect of Paramatma, every guna of Paramatma is a blessing for us. Even if you cut a sandalwood tree, the tree will only provide fragrance to the person who harmed it. That is the guna of a vriksham. That's the guna of Paramatma. Even if we go and say, Oh, Krishna, why did you not take care of me? He will not feel hurt. He will still come on, only show his fragrance to us. Krishna will still come to us. He will not, that is the guna of a vriksham. See, the Vishnu Sashrama, uh, the Namas are so very beautiful. We need to actually feel the Namas when we recite. When we say vriksham, should just pass there and relate it. Oh, what can a tree do? And that is how we have to understand the meaning of it. If we do that, we don't need to separately, you know, do chanting. We, if we just stand outside, Vriksham, oh, immediately Vishnu Sashranama will be there, will be chanting one Nama of Vrikshan Sashranama right there when we are standing outside. That is how we are connected to Vishnu Sashranama. Very beautiful Nama. That is the tolerance property of Paramatma. Even those who make mistakes, even those who cause injury, Paramatma has the Karuna Murti. He is the Karuna Murti who can forgive and he would only provide fragrance even to those person who have harmed us. Vriksha, God's greatest creation. This Vriksham tree gets all the guna from Paramatma. He is the one that provides shelter to everyone, irrespective of rich or poor, summer or winter. Anybody can go and stand under the vriksham. He'll provide shelter. He helps even those who do not understand him. Very beautiful interpretation, isn't it? Hence, Paramatma has the nama of this greatest creation, his greatest creation, vriksha. In the sacred Puri Jagannath temple, Lord Jagannatha, is himself made from a tree, vriksham. Hence, Paramatma is worshipped as vriksha. The entire shariram of Puri Jagannatha is made out of vriksham, tree shariram. Vriksha Narayana Swarupam, Jagannatha Swami. Now, some more very beautiful analysis of the namas in the shloka. Varuna and Vriksha. Let's take these two. Hmm? In general, Vriksham, a tree, needs ground. It needs a base. It needs a ground to stand. But have you ever seen a giant tree, a giant Vriksham, stand without being rooted in the ground? There's a ginormous tree with great roots. Have you ever seen a ginormous giant tree, a vriksham, stand without being rooted in the ground? Extraordinarily, the sun Varuna stands as a giant tree in the heaven. Varuna vriksham. It's the only tree that stands in the heaven for the benefit of everyone. And hence, Varuna describes the greatness of the sun as Vriksha also. Varuna and Vriksha. See how the 
they are not some namas they are very beautifully interrelated varuna the sun stands in the heaven as vriksha as a tree to provide benefit for everybody varuna vriksham next nama pushkaraksha aksha aksha means ice pushkaraksha means one who has nourishing eyes prasada varshine poshake akshine like rain his krupa pours prasada varshinam and nurtures everyone through the glance of his eyes just by looking at his eyes prasada varshinam he nurtures his nourishes everybody just by looking with his eyes he is pushkaraksha for example in sita swayamvara many many kings came many great kings came to lift the bow but nobody could lift the bow and then sage vishwamitra blesses shri rama to go and lift the bow everybody is anxiously awaiting the most glorious moment knowing how difficult the task is the shiva dhanush that is to be taken lifted and strung was so huge that it took 60000 men to roll this cart to bring it to the swayambara chambers ashta chakram it had eight chakras it seems and it took 60000 men not just ordinary men very tall men and they are not ordinary men they are wheel cart wheel cart push pullers their job is wheel cart puller that means they have enormous strength not one not two 60000 men with in eight chakras that that base had eight chakras that big of a structure itself on top of that there is this bow they are trying to bring that bow into janaka's chambers that how much difficult it was so sita mata here knows how difficult and how heavy this bow was so she's really worried how rama is going to lift this bow she has already given her heart to shri rama she is eagerly waiting for marrying shri rama at this moment she is very anxious and she is very worried knowing the the how heavy the bow is at that time you know what rama does he is pushkaraksha just with his eyes he just gives one glance to sita mata that glance is so comforting that he speaks to her with his eyes generally how do we speak we speak with our mouth we speak words to speak but rama here looks at that sita mata and speaks to her with just his eyes i speak pushkaraksha the eyes the aksham that can nourish his his beloved just by looking at it the eyes that can nurture his devotees just by looking eyes speak here rama spoke to sita mata with very comforting uh, eyes saying that this is very easy for me and there he goes he lifts it very very easily and he just tries to string and he even breaks the bow and he um, everybody is so very happy and uh, sita rama kalyanam happens auspiciously but at that moment that sita mata wanted to know if rama can lift the bow he just speaks with his aksham and instantly nourishes gives an answer speaking with his eyes so he who speaks with his eyes to shower nourishing grace is pushkaraksha the last nama is maha mana there are two components in this nama maha and mana maha refers to mahat great mana refers to manas maha mana mana refers to he who is ever generous one who has great manas one who is ever generous one who is broad minded until now we reviewed namas to say that he is parabrahmam he is hidden he cannot be known now this nama says his manas is so big that his generosity cannot be known either maha mana 
he always keeps on thinking what should i do to help my devotees maha mana he doesn't say i have already given you so much every time we ask for more and more and more and more he gives and gives and gives and gives vishala hridayam maha mana he also doesn't say i gave you i am the one who gave you he doesn't say that at all it shows his broad mindedness maha mana so that is the property that we should learn if we give something to somebody we should not say i gave you that is that is what he teaches us here maha mana we should be broad minded we should have vishala hridayam kuchela is an old friend of krishna kuchela is very poor so his wife asked him to go and meet krishna all he had was a handful of poha because he was very poor he did not have anything to give krishna but to give a handful of poha affectionately kuchela gives that to krishna out of great love kuchela spends all the time with krishna and he even forgets why he came to meet krishna krishna being the maha mana generously grants kuchela with the greatest wealth kuchela just goes home he doesn't even ask krishna anything but krishna being maha mana grants everything grants all the wealth to krishna all the wealth to kuchela without even kuchela asking maha mana and how does krishna create this just with his mind with a sankalpam he is here kuchela already on his way back home but by the time he went home krishna with his sankalpam already created vishesha shakti he has maha mana one who is ever generous and broad minded just by eating kuchela just gave poha to krishna but krishna was so very generous broad minded vishala hridayam that he gracefully accepted it and bestowed the best of blessings to kuchela so he is maha mana one who is ever generous and broad minded that is the shloka veda swango jita krishno druta sankarshano chutah varuno varuno vriksha pushkaraksho maha mana as next steps with guru's blessings let's explore the 60th shloka in vishnu sahasranama loka samasta shukino bhavantu thank you so much